Hello everyone, hope you're doing well. Today we're going to be having a look at another post which is based on a data mine from Zabby. Now if you don't know who Zabby is, Zabby is one of the main data miners who look at stuff when it comes to War Thunder and uh, gives us kind of a little bit of a preview about what is going to come to the game. Just remember uh, that when it comes to stuff which isn't in the game on the live server, everything is subject to change, meaning that all of this stuff could be different from what is going on. When it comes to uh, other things as well, uh, I've been asked a lot of uh, times over the last few days, when is the update going to be released? And the simple answer, at least for me, is we don't know. All we can go off is uh, general trends that we've seen in the past, and also what it says in the files. But just remember, as I said in point one, the files change quite a lot, and <laughs> the planned release dates for things also change quite a lot. My personal opinion is that it will be released this week, but understand that, you know, my personal opinion doesn't really mean much in this situation. Anyway, as always, thank you to Zabby for providing this information, and also at the same time, if you want to check it out for yourself, there'll be a link in the description to it. Uh, the, we're going to be having a look at the new custom loadout system that they're going to be bringing in for different aircraft. It looks like it's specializing, or at least starting, with some of the new vehicles that are coming to the game in the next update and hopefully uh, this will uh, kind of have a look and see what different loadouts you'll be able to bring along with them. There might be some other parameters or restrictions uh, that are on these loads but at least right now there doesn't seem to be any. The only thing that seems to be there is the maximum amount of load and also maximum imbalance uh, which means the differences between both sides of the uh, weight of both sides. So I'm guessing that's how they're going to balance it. We'll have to see when it comes in. So if we have a look at the one for the A10A, you can see here that you have different slots and different uh, pieces of uh, weaponry which can go on each of the slots. And uh, obviously, uh, when it comes to this stuff, uh, these slots represent the hard points uh, for the A10A early. Maybe for other stuff, it uh, represents uh, something different. But you can see there's a max load, and then there's a max left load, and a max right load, and a max imbalance on the vehicle. So when we have a look at what's available here, on certain hard points, uh, you have some rockets which are available. On others, you have bombs. Others, you have cannons. And then obviously, the the AIM-9Ls as well. So this gives you a general picture of how this is going to work. And uh, also at the same time, there are certain pylons which exempt from imbalance calculations, uh, which seems kind of odd uh, when it comes down to it. Uh, my guess is because uh, the ones that are pointed out are more centralized to the vehicle uh, itself. Uh, so, you know, you have obviously the cannon itself, which is seen as a slot uh, because that's always going to be there. So that's always going to be a definite one. It's in the center of the vehicle. And then if you have a look at four, five, six, and seven, these are the ones which are centrally mounted just under the fuselage of the A10A early. So my guess is they're, they're taken away from the balance equation because uh, they're technically right in the center of the vehicle. So it wouldn't mean that there would be overbalance on one of the wings of the vehicle, for example. But you can generally see the trend of what's going on here. So there are certain hard points that are going to be for bombs, certain ones for rockets, certain ones for sidewinders, and also others uh, for you know uh, other pieces of weaponry, such as the Mavericks. And my guess is you'll be able to pick on which slots uh, you want certain things. So if you want to bring along Mavericks, for example, you will not be able to bring along uh, you know the GBU-8 on the same pylon. So you'll have to take it on the other pylon which uh, is you know uh, right next to it and uh, then you have to work out you know how much weight you're allowed and how much you're not it's kind of surprising uh, a system this complicated we haven't seen it on a dev server by the way uh, that is something which uh, that is something that is uh, kind of odd but maybe we'll get a third dev server that would be kind of surprising too
And then if we have a look at the 8 and 8 late, you can see the differences between them. But uh, the differences are obviously very minor. And once again, uh, we're talking about dev server stuff. So there's no AGM 65Ds, for example. But you can kind of get the feel of how different it's going to be for each of the vehicles. And by the way, I'm pretty sure the 8 and 8 late is going to get GBU 8s as well. They just didn't have them on the dev server for some reason. And uh, there, were, there was a few wonky things. I've, I've got to say, the, the <laughs> dev server this time was pretty unstable um, when it came to a lot of its different elements. It didn't feel like a final dev server uh, when it came to everything. But you can get the idea of, uh, once again, what's going on with the A10A late and the difference uh, in loadouts. Um, my, my guess is they're trying to implement a system similar to like how DCS does things. Uh, where you can choose what goes on each pylon and then you just have to make sure that it either matches up or the weights are, are completed. That would be my guess when it comes to this stuff. And now looking at the MiG-23 MLA, you can see the uh, different pylons for something which is more of like an air superiority fighter compared to the more complicated setup, which is for the A-10. So it's got a much smaller maximum load. And also at the same time, the uh, gun itself is on the slot zero. It's got f uh, four of the hard points on it uh, for the vehicle itself. And then you can see that two of them uh, don't actually get taken into account when it comes to the imbalance calculations. So what this pretty much means uh, for the vehicle is uh, that imbalance won't be too much of an issue because with this max load of 2000 kilos it's going to be really hard to get to that uh, when it comes to things even even if you bring uh you know four by 100 uh, kilo bombs uh, that's still under 2000 so uh, then i suppose if you take into account the gun then it's probably more than 2000 uh, so that's i suppose where the maximum load comes in so maybe you won't be able to take that uh, in its entirety but what's nice about looking at this chart is it shows that they are planning to actually give this thing its proper loadouts instead of what it had on the dev server and that's why i was saying on the dev server you've got to be super careful with what you're looking at because a lot of the loadouts were naff um, on it uh, on pretty much all these different vehicles because they weren't finished yet because they're implementing this new system. I really hope we get a dev blog about this soon because otherwise it's just gonna, uh, it's gonna cause a lot of confusion and uh, lead people along weird alleyways. And this is where it gets really wonky and why Zabby talks about the idea of maybe there's more restrictions going on than he can see because of the fact that uh, if you had uh, what is on the customizable set for the SU-22 UM3K right now, you could technically carry, what is that, 10 R60s, I believe it is, uh, when it comes to the vehicle, uh, plus obviously the NR30 gun as well. So, yeah. Uh, it's definitely one of those things uh, which uh, seems kind of odd. You could also bring along, uh, what, six R60s and two R13M1s. Uh, maybe that's uh, going to be the way forward uh, for uh, for these people. Uh, but yeah, it's, um, it's kind of nuts uh, that you could bring along 10 R60s plus all of the countermeasures and all of that stuff. So there's probably going to be some kind of limitations on it or they're just going to be removed from certain pylons uh, because I'm pretty sure the central pylons for the SU-22 weren't ever wired for uh, IR guided missiles. I might be wrong about that though. Uh, my, my more modern jet knowledge is definitely a little bit less or a little bit lacking uh, compared to other stuff. But you can see you still have the KH-23s, uh, the M's and the ML's, and uh, they don't actually uh, they don't actually get in the way of stuff like the R60s, uh, but uh, at least on the 1 and 8 pylon, I should say, in the center ones they do. Uh, but the maximum load on this is once again pretty high. So I really want to see how this system works. And you can kind of get an idea of what's going to happen and how, how feasible or usable it's going to be for stuff like the SU-22. I really hope they add in a safe presets button uh, because otherwise this is going to be so annoying clicking everything over and over and over again. <laughs> With the JAB, you can see a similar problem as the uh, SU-22. So when the PL-8 is added, remember, it's not going to be added at this update. Uh, you can see that it will be able to carry six of them, at least for this new system. Same with the PL-5Bs, which are coming this update. 
and uh, that will make it a lot stronger than only if it could carry, you know, four with the two aspides or, you know, the PF-10s as they're calling them. So overall, it's definitely a, a formidable vehicle uh, if it's able to get uh, stuff like that. And uh, it should be able to carry pretty much anything it wants when it comes to this max load thing. And then this is another thing. Uh, there's not really much point in having a maximum load if you can carry like pretty much anything on any pylon that you want. Uh, and so I'm wondering if they're actually going to use that as a balance mechanic or they're just going to use it as like a realistic or historical mechanic. That's probably more uh, what's going to come on uh, when it comes to these things. If they use it as a balance mechanic, I feel like it's going to annoy a lot of people. And at least for me, I've got kind of sick of listening to um, people complain, um, especially since I'm not in control of being able to actually change anything. So, you know, I'm really happy that the Italians have got the F-104 SASA so they can shut up for a few months and the French got the Mirage F-1C so they can shut up for a few months. But I'm sure by the time the next update comes out, there's going to be a lot of whiners again. And it seems like those two communities are definitely ones which are producing them more now. The Mirage F1C has a really interesting setup uh, that it can bring. So it has the five hard points, uh, two obviously, one and seven being the ones on the tips of the wings. Those are the ones that can carry IR stuff. And then also uh, you have like the two under wing and then the one center line. If you can bring two magic ones and then three R550Es, the IR guided R550s, that will be super fun. Uh, the R530E is one of my favorite missiles in the game because it's an IR missile, but it's like a long range one. So uh, when uh, the way that I generally play a lot of high tier stuff is I will go off to the side of it and wait for the furball to commence, and then I will pick off targets um, around that fireball, or around that uh, bee's nest, I suppose. And that's, that's generally how I play. So having these long-range missiles, being able to attack a person from a long way away, um, before they can realize you're there, especially at the higher echelons of the game, so people don't flare and stuff like that, is fantastic. And it's something that I use to great effect with the Mirage 3C uh, with its 530E. I also hope the Super 530F is good, but that's way more dependent on the radar than it is the missile itself. You can see this thing can carry some hefty bomb loads as well. You know, if we have a look at the, uh, if we have a look at the bombs on two to six, you know, technically that's what, 5,000 uh, pounds <laughs> worth of bombs. But at the same time, you have that maximum uh, load. But the problem with it is it's 3,000 kilos. So you can bring that whole set of bomb load there. And same with the 2,000 pound ones as well. That is your max load. Or maybe you can't actually, because once again, if you add in the gun, then it's actually more than that. So you'd be able to bring two 2000s, one 1000, and then the gun. It'll be, it'll be kind of interesting to see if you can uninstall the gun on these things. I don't think you'll be able to, though. I'm pretty sure that'll just be one of those definite things that gets added to the calculation. Now, the F-104S ASA does show us an interesting thing uh, when it comes to the actual different slots. So for every other one, uh, you can't kind of dismount the gun, especially on stuff like the A-10. But on the F-104S, there is going to be an ability to dismount it because you're going to have to in order to use certain missiles. But you can see with the sheet here that it doesn't really take that into account. And uh, so instead on the zero slot, you have empty. And then on the fifth slot, you have the M61. So nothing else can sit on the fifth slot. But one of the problems is that you have the aspide, but it doesn't take into account if you put on the aspide, then you won't be able to bring on the, the M61 because of just how that system worked uh, when it came to real life. Uh, but at the same time, you know, it's got a pretty big maximum load, decent uh, also max left and right load. And uh, we'll have to see how all of those factors kind of work into each other uh, in this general setup. Also, if we look at this, this basically means that you can either bring four AIM-9Ls or two AIM-9Ls and two Aspides. And I think I would probably go for four AIM-9Ls. 
But then again, uh, who knows? We'll have to see what the meta looks like when uh, top tier uh, gets added. Well, the new elements of top tier get added in on the live server. But hopefully this has given you a little bit of an insight on what they're working on when it comes to these customized loadouts. And as always, I hope you have a wonderful day and I'll see you next time. I'd just like to thank Merciless Reaper, Jerry Provolt, Mega Dino King, Professor X1718, Orange Tail, Sakoshi Tiger, Teddy, John Ryman, Universe, Eugene's Terry, Ambrosius McClellan, Daniel Stanton, Martinez, Moxie B. Young, and Derek R. Barine, Lafouche, and Samuel Slick for supporting the channel.